Chinese Coast Guard ship used what was described as military grade laser light. American aircraft, this is the PLA Air Force. You are approaching Chinese airspace. A Chinese Navy vessel directed a laser at an Australian military surveillance aircraft. America has long prided itself on having the most powerful and advanced military in the world. But in recent years, many countries have been challenging this status quo and developing their own capabilities to rival or surpass the U.S. One of these countries is China, which has been investing heavily in its defense sector and modernizing its armed forces. China's military ambitions have raised concerns and tensions between the U.S. and its allies, especially in the Asia-Pacific region. And now, China has just unveiled a new weapon that could pose a serious threat to the U.S. and its interests. How did China develop such a powerful weapon? What are its motives and and objectives for targeting the U.S. and how will this affect the balance of power and security in the world? Join us as we discuss how America has been shocked by a new Chinese threat. China has been pouring billions of dollars into developing advanced laser technology and has recently unleashed a series of aggressive laser attacks against the U.S. and its allies. These attacks have sparked outrage and condemnation from the international community and have raised the risk of a major conflict in the region. Shining a laser at an airplane may seem like a harmless prank, but it can have serious consequences for everyone on board and anyone on the ground. In recent years, the aviation industry has faced an increasing threat from laser strikes or lazing, which can blind pilots and cause accidents. China, in particular, has been notorious for using military-grade lasers on hostile aircraft. These lasers, also known as dazzlers, produce an intense light beam that can temporarily or permanently damage the eyesight of pilots. By illuminating the cockpit of an airplane, dazzlers can also interfere with the instruments and navigation systems, making it difficult for the pilots to control the aircraft. In 2018, the U.S. lodged a formal diplomatic complaint with China, accusing Chinese nationals of shining military-grade laser pointers at U.S. pilots operating out of the American base in Djibouti. Djibouti is a strategic location in the Horn of Africa, where both the U.S. and China have military bases. The U.S. alleged that in one incident, two USAF pilots on a C-130 cargo plane suffered minor eye injuries as they came into land at the U.S. military's Camp Lemon Air Base. In 2019, Australia also reported that handheld lasers were increasingly being used against ADF assets, especially in the South China Sea. Military officials blame small Chinese maritime militia vessels, which are often disguised as fishing boats, for the laser attacks. These vessels are part of China's strategy to assert its territorial claims in the disputed waters, where several other countries have competing interests. The U.S. was caught off guard again in 2020 when the U.S. Navy accused a Chinese warship sailing in the Pacific of firing a military-grade laser at its P-8 surveillance aircraft. The P-8 is a sophisticated aircraft that can conduct anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare, as well as intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. The U.S. Pacific Fleet said in a statement that the Chinese Navy destroyer's actions were unsafe and unprofessional. It also warned that weapons-grade lasers could potentially cause serious harm to aircrew and mariners, as well as ship and aircraft systems. A similar incident happened again in February of 2022, albeit with the Australian Defence Force. A Chinese military vessel was accused of endangering the lives of the Australian Defence Force after a laser was shown at a P-8A maritime aircraft just north of Australia. Not only Chinese warships and nationals, but also Chinese fighter jets have been accused of using military-grade lasers to target the aircraft of the U.S. and its allies. For instance, in May of 2022, a J-16 aircraft of the PLA Air Force reportedly fired a laser at an Australian P-8A flying over the South China Sea as part of a dangerous interception that jeopardized the safety of the Australian crew. The J-16 also cut across the nose of the P-8A at a very close distance and released a bundle of chaffs, which are small pieces of aluminum that can interfere with the radar and engine of the aircraft. The Australian Defence Minister Richard Marles told the media the J-16 accelerated and cut across the nose of the P-8, settling in front of the P-8 at a very close distance. 
At that moment, it released a bundle of chaffs, which contained small pieces of aluminum, some of which were ingested into the engine of the P-8 aircraft. Quite obviously, this is very dangerous. The year 2023 also started on a high note for Chinese lasers. In February this year, the Philippines accused China's Coast Guard of using a laser to try to disrupt a resupply mission to troops in the South China Sea. The Philippines said that the Chinese vessel aimed a laser at the Filipino crew, causing them to experience temporary blindness and nausea. The U.S. expressed its full solidarity with Manila against the laser incident and called on China to respect the sovereignty and rights of the Philippines. The Chinese foreign ministry responded by denying that the Chinese vessel directed lasers at the Filipino crew and claimed that the handheld equipment did not cause any damage to the vessel or the crew on board. It also accused the Philippines of violating China's sovereignty and jurisdiction by conducting illegal activities in the South China Sea. The U.S. Pentagon also just declassified new documents revealing that Chinese military aircraft had been involved in approximately 180 risky incidents over the South and East China Seas in the last two years. In many reported interception cases over the years, Chinese crews are noted for using military flares or lasers to target aircraft belonging to the U.S. and its allies globally. Because of this, tens of thousands of specially made eyewear are being purchased by the U.S. Air Force to protect fighter pilots around the world from laser beams. The Air Force Life Cycle Management Center's Human Systems Division announced the initiative, which aims to provide eight types of eyewear for different situations and environments. These include anti-laser spectacles for day and night use, anti-ballistic glasses, and visors that can work with night vision goggles. According to the Air Force Safety Center, flash blindness occurs when a laser pointer's beam hits an eyeball or the windshield of an aircraft. Aircraft. This can be especially dangerous for military personnel who are taking off or landing. Flash blindness can also have long-term effects on the health of the eye and the career of the pilot. Captain Pete Coates, who leads the eyewear initiative at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, said in a press statement, The health of the eye is so important to our pilots. The consequences of getting lasered without having proper protection could not only prevent the pilot from flying and landing an aircraft safely, but also cost them their career. So we aim to ensure the right eyewear is available to everyone. Airmen can be protected against such potentially fatal consequences with eight types of eyewear, including anti-laser spectacles for use during the day and at night, anti-ballistic glasses, and visors that interface with night vision goggles. The equipment is designed to protect all air crew members, excluding those piloting the F-35A Lightning II fighter and the U-2 Dragon Lady spy plane. Pilots of slow-moving, low-altitude platforms such as tilt rotors and helicopters need defense against lasers and ballistics, while those operating fighter or bomber jets likely require protection against unwanted beams. Over the next three years, the military plans to distribute over 42,000 pairs of glasses and visors to its units. The night eyewear not only enhances protection, but also improves visibility for crew members by allowing more natural light to pass through the lens. The specific eyewear protection provided to air crew members will be determined based on mission requirements. China is also doing some really interesting things with LiDAR. LiDAR, or light detection and ranging, is a technology that uses laser pulses to scan the surrounding environment and create detailed 3D maps. LiDAR has many applications in both civilian and military domains domains, such as autonomous driving, smart city planning, and battlefield reconnaissance. However, LiDAR also poses potential security risks, especially when it falls into the hands of China. On November 27th, the House Select Committee on China sent the letter to the Department of Commerce, urging the administration to apply additional scrutiny to Chinese LiDAR firms. The letter warned that China could use LiDAR to spy on critical infrastructure, collect sensitive data, and gain an edge in military capabilities. The letter also cited the Outbound Investment Transparency Act, which was attached as an amendment to the Senate's version of the 2024 National Defense Authorization Act. The act targeted networked lasered scanning systems, a type of LADAR that can connect multiple devices and share data in real time. What makes LIDAR stand out is its ability to map urban environments, peer through critical infrastructure, and create an almost video game-like reality. LIDAR can capture the shape, 
size, and texture of objects and surfaces regardless of light conditions and physical obstacles. It can enable autonomous navigation of self-driving cars and can advance smart city programs by collecting traffic and pedestrian data to improve city planning and operations. LiDAR can also enhance the quality of life and safety of citizens by providing accurate and timely information on weather, polluting, and emergencies. However, LiDAR also has significant military applications that can pose a threat to national security and stability. LiDAR can be used in uncrewed vehicles and drones for autonomous navigation and to create highly accurate 3D maps of battlefields, among other uses. LiDAR can also help identify and track targets, assess damage, and avoid detection. LiDAR can give a strategic advantage to the military that possesses it and a disadvantage to the military that does not. This is why the U.S. is concerned about China's access to and development of LiDAR, especially as China has been accused of stealing and exploiting U.S. technology and intellectual property. The automotive LiDAR market alone is expected to grow from $300 million to almost $5 billion in 2028. There is a major debate currently unfolding in the LiDAR sector about the security risks of Chinese dominance of U.S. LiDAR markets. U.S. firms claim that Chinese LiDAR poses imminent security risks as it could be used to spy on critical infrastructure, collect sensitive data, and gain an edge in military capabilities. Chinese firms dispute this claim and argue that their LiDAR products are safe and reliable. Chinese LiDAR producers, like Hasai, contend that the Chinese government cannot access any data collected by their automotive LiDAR equipment as it does not connect to the internet and that their equipment cannot store sufficient quantities of data to pose a threat. However, data security is not the only concern that U.S. firms have. A potentially more serious concern is foreign dominance over U.S. producers, which could jeopardize the vitality of the U.S. industry overall. China has a history of employing coercive economic tactics to dominate strategic sectors. Government subsidies allow Chinese companies to accelerate production and flood the market with artificially cheaper goods which can bankrupt foreign competitors. This well-established pattern has recently garnered fierce attention in the electric vehicle context, where China is a global leader. An inability to procure domestic LiDAR would leave the United States reliant on potentially less secure foreign products and products that could ultimately be weaponized or cut off. In December of 2022, China added LiDAR to a draft on the Catalog of Technologies Prohibited and Restricted from Export, a Chinese government export control list, as a restricted item. While the final version of this document has not been published, this action could adversely impact the autonomous vehicle firms that depend on Chinese-produced LiDAR. It can also signal China's intention to limit the access and development of LiDAR by other countries and to use it as a bargaining chip or a weapon in geopolitical conflicts. China has designated LiDAR as a strategic emerging industry in 2020 and has increased its state investment in the sector. China has also been accused of unlawfully obtaining and using foreign IP to develop its LiDAR products. These actions have resulted in a U.S. LiDAR market that is now at risk of foreign takeover. For example, in the automobile LiDAR sector, Chinese company Hasai has a 67% market share in the robo-taxi market and supplies almost every American firm in the sector. The U.S. government has a robust national security and trade toolkit designed to confront this type of problem. Advanced LiDAR models are included in the Export Administration Regulations at the Bureau of Industry and Security. If conclusive data show real national security threats related to Chinese LiDAR, the U.S. could add foreign LiDAR firms to additional lists, such as the Commerce Department's Entity List, which serves as a purchasing blacklist. The U.S. government could also use the Treasury Department's non-SDN Chinese Military Industrial Complex Companies list and the Defense Department's list of Chinese military companies. These lists identify Chinese entities that are subject to sanctions or restrictions due to their involvement in China's military sector. However, neither Hasai nor RoboSense, two major Chinese LiDAR companies, are included on these lists, and their hard links to security vulnerabilities are indeed difficult to prove definitively. This does not diminish the vulnerabilities that could arise from U.S. reliance on foreign 
foreign produced LIDAR. The United States should consider initiating a new Section 301 investigation that would subject additional LIDAR technologies to tariff measures. Another potential tool is the use of the outbound screening notification regime to stem U.S. capital flows into LIDAR firms as a mechanism for bolstering sorely needed investment in U.S. firms, reducing investments into foreign LIDAR firms with possible military ties. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.